This is how it usually goes. You develop a cool machine learning model and then you try to figure out how to best view the results. And most of the time, that means that you are stuck with building functions that are not flexible or interactive enough. But today I will show you how to build 3D visualization dashboard in Python. And you will get this in a few minutes. You'll be surprised how easy it is. On this channel, I gave you information that would be beneficial in your machine learning endeavors. Everyone can find a data set that suits them. I use the geophysical data set for this tutorial. It is 3D seismic data set from the Force 2020 competition for fall detection, which comes from Australia's Snow West Shell. You can download the volume from Google Drive. Okay, that part was easy. But before I show you how to visualize your data, I'll tell you about the popular visualization platform and libraries in Python. Using the graph on this website as a guide. In the past few years, both Dash and Streamlit have become very popular. There is just one problem. If you want to make a dashboard on the Jupyter Notebook, we only have Voila and a panel to work with. Let's take a closer look at the panel by Holovis. The best description of what panel is, is on their official website. Panel is an open source Python library that lets you create custom interactive web apps and dashboards by connecting using the find widgets to plots, images, tables or text. So that means that you can use it to create something like this or this or even this. It seems like a good fit for our purpose of visualizing 3D data. And before we go to installing your sub to the channel would be marvelous. Let's make sure that our tutorial has a clean virtual environment to work with. By the way, you can download Jupyter Notebook from my GitHub repo to follow me now. We need to install these packages. Don't worry, I will not bore you down with live coding. Focusing on written code is much faster and better. At the beginning, we need to import everything we need for this tutorial. Defining here where we store 3D seismic volume that we want to explore. Then use Segi IO library to read the file. People who want to learn more about the dataset can look at the file header with this comment. The whole 3D volume was then read into the RAM memory. And here is how we would usually plot data with well-known libraries such as matplotlib. And now let's start by drawing a rough sketch of how everything will look on our dashboard. We want the slice to be able to move in three directions. Have a palette selector. And be able to see the slice in the middle. I believe that's enough for what we want to do. Let's import the libraries we need for interactive visualization and make specific changes to each plot. Usually dashboards are made up of controls, interactive functions and layout. We already have a layout on a piece of paper. The controls are things like radio buttons, sliders and everything else that is used to change how data looks. We only need sliders and palette selector in our design. In our case, we need to define interactive functions that plot a single slice of data in each direction. And the layout is the last piece of code we need to run in order to get an interactive visualization. If you have work with front-end development, it's going to be similar to that. Everything is organized in rows and columns so that you can construct the dashboard that fits your needs. And we are getting this interactive visualization where you can look through the dataset zoom in in some parts and get values at certain places. It is simple and ready to use. But let's get one step further with our visualization. Since we already got in this far, the next logical way is to do overlays. You may, for example, overlay other data, such as fall probability on top of the picture. The condition that we've written would break in this case. It's not only the problem of finding a way to visualize it. Of course, we need to change interactive functions, but also the problem with memory management. Look, the data set that we downloaded and visualized is stored in RAM, which in my case 16 GB. The overlay brings extra 9 GB of data, so the combination of the seismic volume and the attribute would break my system. During data visualization, we can read only the parts of the data that we need, rather than pulling everything into the RAM for reading. I will use Seismic ZPF instead of Sega IO implementation. 
We use pip to set up Seismic ZPF. You can quickly change Segway files into ZPF format and make a Z-optimized volume at the same time. Changing a few implementation to use file handle and to use an RGBA array to blend the full probability cube. And this is what happened as a result. The same goes for other controls. Moving around the cube is quick. Only a few megabytes of RAM are needed for two 3D cubes of data. If you want to learn how to compute your own full probability volume with machine learning, then check out this video that I made for you. See you at the next one.